We hit another all-time high for the portfolio in March, and then we gave most of the gains back in the first week of April. I'll be sharing both the highs and the lows of last month in this video. We'll look at the portfolio's value by holding, review all transactions, we'll take a look at all the dividends received in March, it was a huge month, we'll look at the HODL factory update, which is what I call my individual stock holdings, and then discuss any changes to the future strategy moving forward. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Jeff Teeples, and here we aim to grow your wealth with simple, time-tested solutions. Please smack that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and drop me a comment down below with any suggestions that you have for these monthly portfolio update videos. We had 11 new channel members in the last week. It was another big one. I'd like to give a huge thank you to the new members that are on the screen now, and a shout out to all the members that have been here all along as well. My goal is to keep this channel focused on quality content that adds value to your investing journey. I hope this channel membership allows me to limit my sponsorships to only the products I use and enjoy. And if you're interested in joining the channel membership, please use the link below in the description to this video. I've had a lot of people ask about that. Let's grow. Stay grounded. Our portfolios have been shooting up on a weekly basis for just over a year now. We may begin to feel like geniuses that understand investing on another level. But it was only a couple years ago when the money printer was stuck in overdrive and we were jumping all over speculative assets with no care in the world. What's an NFT? Who cares? Give me five of them. Everything goes up, right? Warren Buffett nailed it when he said, only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. We need to develop a portfolio based on a well-balanced system around our own situation and then stick to those allocations, especially during the best and the worst of times. Staying to your target allocations allows you to build stable wealth while also nibbling on the juicy dips. If you have 10 quality long-term holdings, for example, it is impossible to not buy the dip if you stick to your target allocations every time that you dollar cost average into your portfolio. And this isn't the typical VGT feels overpriced right now gut feeling that we're talking about here. And our guts are right oftentimes. I mean, a lot of this is common sense. For example, I haven't bought VGT in my portfolio for over a year, but it's not because my gut said VGT seems high. It's because it's been over its target allocation as it's performed well. So naturally, I've bought the dip with my other holdings to bring them back up. The simple act of dollar cost averaging your new money into your holdings that have fallen below their target allocation, so they've comparatively underperformed all the other assets in your portfolio, will always give you the biggest bang for your buck. And when the market has its next big crash, and it will, we don't know when, but it absolutely will, it's even more important to stick to the same exact system. You'll be picking up more shares after the crash for every dollar that you put in the market. So it's important to never panic sell. When everyone else is running for the hills, that's when you swoop in and buy up the shares. Assuming, of course, that you've been lucky enough to keep your job and you're, you still have your stable income to dollar cost average into the market. But unless you absolutely have to, never sell when everything is crashing. Do the opposite of what your human instinct, what our gut tells us to do. A good investing system will automate Warren Buffett's advice to be fearful when others are greedy and to be greedy when others are fearful. It's time to see how this robot performed in March. Portfolio Overview. I plan on dropping an update every month on the portfolio, so eventually I gotta find a way to streamline some of this information. But just as a review from the last video, if, you, if you're new here, my wife and I have our investments in five different places. We have most of our assets in E-Trade. She has a 401k and HSA at her employer. We have an online brokerage for our crypto that I'm in the process of transitioning to E-Trade over time. M1 Finance is where I hold my individual stocks, the HODL factory. I can't wait to share more details about that. And then we have checking and other, which is some miscellaneous cash that's not held on any of the big four. We're gonna hop over and check out some of those accounts now, and then we'll show the spreadsheet that I use to track everything at a complete level so I know what to buy based on my overall target allocations. 
And I'm happy to announce that I have a copy of my weekly portfolio update spreadsheet out there for the channel members. At least I hope I do. I'm recording this on Tuesday and that's my Wednesday homework. I'm out on Seeking Alpha, my favorite site to research the stocks and the ETFs, but this is also where I aggregate my portfolio to. And to save a little time in this video, I'm not gonna actually navigate to E-Trade. That's our primary account where we have most of our net worth. I've done it in the last videos if you wanna see my actual E-Trade account. But for this one, I'm just gonna do the drop down, and these may slightly vary. I always put this disclaimer out there. I'm going to get into a spreadsheet that I update every Friday. So I updated it Friday and today is Tuesday as I record this video the following Tuesday the values will vary slightly normally the shares are identical I think that SCHD shares you might see be slightly off because I did reinvest some dividends in between the, those two dates but that's very rare but I just wanted to put that out there if the data doesn't exactly match up so this one's more up to date. This is everything real time. In our E-Trade portfolio, it's where I keep my VGT, which is all in a traditional IRA, and SCHD, which is about half and half as far as being in a taxable brokerage account and the traditional IRA. And as you can see here, I have 4,212 shares of SCHD with an average cost of 72.50. And I have 650 shares of VGT. That hasn't changed for a long time because it's been outperforming. So I haven't been buying it back to its target allocation at an average cost of $287 per share. You can see the total change. I'm up 151,000 on my VGT and I'm up about about 30,000 on my SCHD. And then my money market, I try to keep it 10%. We'll take a look at that later with my spreadsheet. Uh, there's other cash as well from checking and, and other. So I try to keep the total cash at 10%. And then JEPQ is my other holding. This is my cash flower that I have strictly for, I quit my job and I need income purposes. And I picked up 1,632 shares, that hasn't changed in a while. And it's appreciated quite nicely because this is relatively recent. I think it becomes a year old in, I want to say August. And I do plan to sell it as long-term capital gains at that time. I love JEPQ, just to be clear, but I want more qualified dividends. And by then I might be trickling a little bit of income from this channel to make up the difference. And I'll roll it into my 50-50 mix most likely, or potentially the HODL factory, maybe QQQM. I've been on that fence for a long time, as you guys probably know if you've watched my videos for a while. But anyway, I'll definitely share what I end up doing with it, but it won't be until late summer. And so for now, it's up $9,000, 12%, and is cash flowing extremely well because of course this does not include dividends this is strictly the price appreciation e-trade's done very well and for my wife's work accounts we have an hsa account where VIGIX is the best offering. And this is essentially the mutual fund version of VUG, the popular growth ETF. And then this one here is her 401k, a low cost S&P 500 index is the best option there. These shares you'll notice will go up a little each video. We cut every paycheck, um, we max these out. We set it up to where it's 23,000 a year that goes into this plus a company match, which at Boeing is huge. And like literally, I think more than she puts in, I wanna say. And then this one here is the HSA, so it'll be 8,300 per year. And they're just divided evenly over her paycheck. So I don't track them. You know, I update them every two weeks when she's paid. I won't explain exactly how many shares I bought of these, just know they'll always go up some. And you can see the value here is 350. So right now, the S&P 500 has gotten a little bit ahead of my other two holdings, and that's inevitable because my income is gone, so we're not adding to these like we used to to keep them all balanced. And then my crypto, I feel like I should do a drum roll here, but I won't. Kaboom, hashtag Doge Army. So I have Dogecoin at, as my worst holding, it's down 51%, it's worth 586, so I have 3,100 Doge coins at 19, it's at 19 cents right now, and I think I bought them at 38 cents. And then I have, oh yeah, 39 cents, sorry, right here. And then, so iBit is what I recently, for my iBit, I, I made a video a couple months ago, but basically what I'm doing here is I'm dollar cost averaging 2% of my overall portfolio into iBit over time. So I do 500 a week 
And so far I've accumulated 141 shares of iBet and we're up 18.5%. I just started this on January 31st, I wanna say, and we'll dive more into those details. And then my actual Bitcoin holdings, not iBit, but Bitcoin itself out on the exchange that I'm currently in the process of leaving. I bought all these in 2021. I bought when the market was high. My average cost per coin is 46,000. So I was upside down forever on this. As you can see, we're now at 69 nice per coin so i'm way up i have about a 50 percent gain and it's worth 54,000. so this will be transitioned into ibit that is in my plans i'm currently buying ibit and sitting on this but eventually i will stop taking money from my money market to buy the ibit instead i'll do it from bitcoin because remember there's no new money coming to my portfolio except for my wife's you know she covers these but everything else is a zero by default. So with iBit, I've been taking 500 of our cash, our money market per week to do this temporarily. And I'll backfill that if necessary when I start selling Bitcoin. M1 Finance, we'll get into more. That's my individual stocks and that it's worth 8,000. Checking another, we won't bother. That's just my business checking account or personal checking account and some other cash, but it's basically 14.8K that doesn't earn interest. That's why I keep it separate from my interest earning money market. All right, you guys, next stop is M1 Finance and welcome to the HODL factory. So this is where I keep all my individual stocks. And right now I have $8,000 in the HODL factory. I also have about $1,800 in earn in this high interest savings account here that I'm funneling into this. So what I did was when I started my YouTube channel, my wife and I sent over a chunk of money to my business checking account to cover bills. And I knew I wouldn't make money for a while and it would lose money. So we sent over too much or what we hoped would be too much. And now that I'm breaking even and actually making a little money on YouTube over my costs, we sent the excess amount, which was about 1800 to the savings of M1. So I actually have almost $10,000 with M1. And right now I'm cost averaging in 300 a week. And I'm excited because what I'm going to do as I begin to make money on YouTube, I'm going to use that money to fund M1 Finance. Right now I'm on year to date for the performance and I'm going to scroll down here. So I have the HODL factory, which is the one I've been sharing. My best friend and I started running this fund in April of 2023. So year to date in 24 only, and this is a money weighted return. Year to date, it's up 13.3% to the market. And this is VU, 100% VUs, 9.32. So we're beating the market so far. And if you look at all, which includes last Last year, it is up an astounding 49.6% to the market's 27.3. So the HODL factor is performing extremely well. We have it down to 25 holdings. We're, we're still working out the methodology, but we're really happy with the performance. And now you'll notice you're thinking, well, what the heck is this? We started a new one called the Dividend Snowball, and we just started it literally a few days ago. And then the dividend market started day one was today. So what I'm trying to beat with this one is the dividend market is 50% SCHD, 25% DGRO and 25% VIG. This combination gets a weighted yield of 2.72%. And I made that the market because if we go back to the dividend snowball, it has a weighted yield of 2.68% and a five year kegger of 14.8% as of right now. It's 25 dividend stocks. I'm not going to share the details yet. It is brand new and we are working out the methodology, but I wanted to find something to get a solid dividend now and also grow dividends and only pick up quality companies. So I basically want to make a hybrid between SCHD and DGRO and hopefully outperform both of them on total returns. So more to come on this new fund. We're really excited to get the ball rolling, but the HODL factory has done incredibly well so far. I will be creating a spreadsheet for the members regarding the HODL factory that'll break down the 25 companies we hold, the weight that we have in them, the exact dollar amount, and then some high level stats. It'll show how I do the weighted yield and, and five year growth rate and net income and stuff like that. So I'm putting that together now and that'll be out there for the members eventually. I'd like to provide a little bit of a tease here in the meantime. So I opened the HODL factory and I sorted by gain and I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at the top five companies that we hold. 
We have Broadcom, Williams Sonoma, Lamb Research, Applied Materials, and KLA Corp. We'll be releasing more details about this to come in the future. This is a tab on the tracking spreadsheet where I input all of the values at the end of the week every Friday. So something like this, you can use shares and the spreadsheet will automatically update itself better. But I'll go into more details of why I don't do that when I fully explain this out in the membership. But basically I plug in all these numbers each week to this spreadsheet right here. And then it gets me my total. This is just a table. So these are all live in Seeking Alpha because it actually does have my shares. So it makes it a breeze just to fill these in. Ultimately, it creates a pivot table and we'll make sure this thing's refreshed. And it is. So this is where I see my portfolio allocations. You can see right now VU, which is technically that other ticker is 26%. And then VGT and SCHD are pretty close to one another. If I had my DCA in right now between the two, I'd go SCHD. Cash is right at 10%. That's good. That's what I like to see it at. And that's across all platforms. JEPQ is at 6.6%. And you'll see down here, I classify it as cash flow, not cash. It's not part of my main dividend setup, like the three primary types of investments. You have a cornerstone, growth ETFs, and dividend ETFs. I sort of consider it a cash flow separate holding right now um, that will be temporary. And then iBit is all the Bitcoin and the little bit of Doge, it just rolls into this figure. This is the HSA at 2% and the stocks at 0.6. So I really wanna focus on getting these stocks up to 10% in the near future. And once I offload JEPQ, I think I'll trickle some to the stocks and then the other to just my main setup here, which these are the two I buy because this one's in that 401k that we don't control. It just gets money every time my wife gets a paycheck. It's time to see where all the money went last month. Portfolio contributions. My wife and I are still settling into a new flow of investing. We used to dump a lot more money into the market each month before yours truly decided to walk away from his job to start this YouTube channel and to spend more time with my kids. We are still able to max out her 401k contributions and her HSA contributions each year. This is why I put a bigger chunk of our money in JEPQ and the money market that I roll with because the supplemental dividends each month even though it's not qualified dividends, so that hurts a little bit, allows us to pay the bills along with her paycheck as I ramp up this thing that I'm doing. And we were able to reinvest most of our dividends last month as well, and we'll get into all that later. Let's check it out. All right, put together a log of transactions in the month of March, just so we don't have to bounce around all the different platforms. I'm gonna to try to streamline this. So these are the purchases we made outside of the HSA and the 401k, just to be clear. And as you can see, there's a lot of IBIT there. We bought on a weekly basis, you can see on the 4th, the 11th, the 18th, and the 25th, we bought 12 to 14 shares. And then the amount put in, I put in about 500. Um, I only buy whole shares, so they bounce around a little. And like you can see on this one, I might've had a dividend that gave me, gave me a little more than 500, but in general, about 500 a week. And then I also reinvested some SCHD dividends back into SCHD in March. And there's a little more to come in April on that one as well. And then I put for the HODL factory, I was able to contribute $700. So I hope to see this number go up as I continue to make money on YouTube. And I have a little influx from the excess I had in my checking account. So I'm at the point where I can finally start funding this bad boy to get it up to close to 10%. And then I just, in a pivot table, I have for March, 2024, you can see 53 shares of IBIT for a total of 2,100. SCHD, you can see there, my average cost was kind of high on that one. I guess that's the nature of the beast right now. And then the HODL is just $700. So there was a total of $3,583 that were invested in the market. But this is not new money. This comes directly from my money market. This was dividends reinvested, and this was from the business account. So there's a variety of funding sources, but none of them, unfortunately, were income. Dividends received. The dividends were flowing in March, you guys. It was our second highest month ever.
I created a new tab on my spreadsheet for dividends, and this is a pivot table. And I should probably explain this. In January and February, and a lot of last year, I had our savings in treasury bills. So you get the interest in the day you do it, which was before this. So that would be zero interest for that instead of the money market or JEPQ, which pumps it out monthly. This does look a little goofy, and we won't have good year over years until 24 versus 25. But for March in 2023, we had $2,583. And this year we had a whopping $4,534 of income. So last year we had some CDs, some high interest savings, a big chunk of SCHD you can see there, VGT as well, and VIGIX didn't have the money market yet. Now in 2024, which is probably more interesting to you guys, SCHD paid me $2,560 of dividends. And this is across the taxable and the traditional IRA, it's all in here. My M1 mix, the HODL factory, a whopping $6 and 54 cents. JetQ pumped out $620.76. This has been vital for helping us pay the bills. VGT actually stepped his game up and paid a really big dividend in quarter one, the biggest ever by a decent margin. And that's why a lot of its keggers right now are sky high and VIGIX up their game as well. Plus we own more shares. And then you can see the money market gives nearly 500. In March, a whopping $4,533. And that brings the total for the year through one quarter to $6,820. And if we wanna see year over year, we have $6,820 compared to $2,744 last year at this time. But again, the circumstances are different. Still, off to a pretty nice start. Time for the moment of truth. Is this thing working? Portfolio performance. I do like the competition that we used in the last update, so I think I'm going to make that a staple moving forward. We'll compare the performance against the S&P 500, or the market, and for that I'll use VU. And then we'll also make it a habit to keep adding VT, which is the Boglehead Dream ETF. VT combines VTI, which is the total US stock market, and VXUS, which is the total international stock market, less US, into one simple holding. So what are we running here? Let's do this thing. We're out here on Portfolio Visualizer to do the back test. So in this one, we'll be running 2012 through 2024. And we use 2012 because of SCHD's age. We can't go further back, but it actually lines with when I started investing quite well. I put in that we start with $100,000 and we put in $17.25 a month. This is just to roughly mimic my final balances. We'll take a look at that soon. And then we're going to have reinvest dividends and display income on, so both yes. So the mix is, and I must confess you guys, I added Bitcoin and VIGIX, but Bitcoin makes my performance so astronomically impressive over the last 10 years. You just can't do it. It doesn't tell us anything. I mean, even only being 5% of my portfolio, it's absurd. So I had to take it out. And then VIGIX, it's only 2% anyway. You know what? And then JEPQ wasn't old enough. So you know what? We're just going to go with the core mix that I always preach because this is what I would have if I had full access to everything to do exactly what I wanted. So, you know, JEPQ is temporary cash flow. VIGIX is the best within my wife's HSA, Bitcoin sort on the side. So I'm just gonna run with the core. Otherwise the numbers just get goofy high. So my mix, which is the third of each, when we start at 100,000, over those 12 years and change, it gets you to 1.35 million, which is close to where I'm actually at right now. That's why I put in those numbers. And then VU, the market, is at 1.14 million, and VT, grabbing everything, would be at 814,000. So I'm glad I've rolled with my mix for sure. And as you can see, the best year is the best, and the worst year is the best with the mix as well. So it has very good downside protection. That's the SCHD in there. Uh, the Sortino and the Sharp are the highest with it as well. You want these numbers higher, that means you get more return per risk. Really, it's just better, honestly. Here in the portfolio growth, they trend together. That's just how the market works. But as you can see, it slowly separates itself with similar trend lines. When we look at the annual returns year by year, I've said in multiple videos, the mix outperforms the market in every year 
from 2014 moving forward. As you can see here in 2013, it didn't, it fell short. Same with 2012. So it's actually kind of nice to throw these in. I will say I don't usually cherry pick. It's just, I grabbed the last 10 years and I started this channel in 2023. So the last 10 years was 2014 through 2023. But when I grab more data, it actually makes the market look better, which I like, because I wanna see how this plays out over as many years as possible. But from 2014 on, the mix has outperformed the market each and every year, as well as VT each and every year. And that's through 2023. As you can see in 2024 so far, the mix is not outperforming as CHD has been holding this back a little and VGT is actually right below the market as well. So we're at 8.4% year to date compared to the 10% of the market. And we are beating VT, which is at 78 I will say 2023 was the same scenario coming into November and December. There's still time for the mix to make it 11 years in a row. And for these annualized returns, in the last three years, the mix is 11.53 to the market's 11.25, and VT way down there at 6.6. .6. In the last five years for annualized returns per year, the mix is at 17.2 to the market's 14.9. Wow, they're both really high. To VT's 11. And over the last 10 years, you're at 15.22% for the mix to 12.87 to the market. That doesn't seem like a big difference, but you would be floored if you looked at the difference of a couple percent, two, three percent on a portfolio projector tool, which you can use out there if you're a channel member. It is a huge difference over 10, 20, 30 years. We're talking seven figures eventually. And then VT is at 8.8%. And over the full 12 years and change of 16.2 versus 14.5 of the market and 10.4 of VT. And in this scenario, dividends are reinvested, but if we were to want cash flow, you can see that the mix year by year grows its dividends significantly better than the market and the total world and US market. And this one you can kind of ignore. Some have paid, some haven't yet. So through 23, it's gotten a nice lead. We'd have 20.4K per year to the 14.7K of the market. Looking ahead, I look forward to putting my YouTube money into the HODL factory moving forward. I want the HODL factory to eventually make up 10% of my overall portfolio. And we plan to increase that amount by 5% for each year that the HODL factory outperforms the market. So that'll be something fun to track. I'm still thinking about specifically how to transition my Bitcoin holdings over to iBit. I've been purchasing $500 a month of iBit, but that money has come from the money market, VMFXX. So I have not began to offload the Bitcoin that I hold out on the online exchange. I have to admit a little bit of that's because the halving event coming up. So I'm a little greedy. I'm holding on to a little extra Bitcoin, but I also just want to kind of not make any knee jerk reactions. Eventually all Bitcoin will be moved off of that exchange and into iBit long term. I'm excited to continue this journey together on this channel over the next few years. This really is going to be a marathon, not a sprint. And I would love for you guys to join me to spice things up. Full stop, you guys, no BS, no fluff. My mission with this channel is to help you reach your version of financial freedom. I share my story, not to brag or weirdly flex on the internet, but it really is to show you that any Joe Schmo can do this. If I can do this, I promise you, you can do this. Check out one of these two videos if you're interested in continuing down that path. Thank you for watching and I will see you here next Sunday. Peace.